What's going on everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. You guys want another moon video? Here we go. All right, back in the day when Soviet Union wasn't Russia like it is today, they had their own launches of the Lunacod. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the Lunacod, it was an eight-wheel electric rover that they actually control manually from Earth. Now, the Soviet Union launched the Lunacod 17 with the Lunacod 1 on board on November 10, 1970 and made it uh, to lunar orbit uh, it was like five days later, right? And uh, operation ceased on October 4th, 1971. A couple fun facts for you guys. It was a solar-powered vehicle. However, it, uh, it relied on thermal energy uh, from a polonium, well, from polonium uh, 210, a radioisotope heater to survive the nighttime cold. Now, I believe it was two weeks in the sun where it was at and then two weeks in the cold, meaning in the darkness. So they needed that to actually uh, uh, keep the, the rover warm inside, right? And, uh, and the thing travels six and a half miles or 10 and a half or 10.54 uh, kilometers. That's a long distance for a rover. Uh, and it did it within 11 days. Now, the reason why they say, it, uh, you know, the operation ceased on October 4th is just it just quit working. Um, so they were probably just relying on it just to kind of look around or whatever. Right. So my question is, were they up there looking at lunar tubes uh, like these ancient lava tubes and stuff like that? All right. Let's jump into that. All right, so here it is right here, the first successful lunar rover. You can see it right there. And this cover right here would actually open up, and it was solar-powered. But again, it was nuclear-powered, the polonium-210, to actually heat up the inside of the rover to keep it functional, right? Because it did have the batteries, and so on and so forth. It needed to keep them uh, warm, or at least at a decent temperature. Um, and we've got right here, this is where it landed. This paper here, this is a PDF. I'll give you this, too. This is an interesting read. Um, and you can see planetary and space science, but you can see right here that's doing a comparison of the Luna 17 or Lunacod 1, which is basically the lunar uh, rover again was on the lander, uh, and the Chengi 3 U2 landing sites, Northwest Mayor Imbrium of the Moon. Now, when you go down here, you can see the two landing sites right here, and you can see the Chengi 3 landing site was right here, just north of Mare Imbrium. And you can see uh, the uh, Lunacod 1 landing site was just south of Sinus Eridum. Uh, and, of course, you got the Montez Jara. All right, so basically they were uh, doing a comparison of what they found and what, you know, back then and what they're finding today. This is the photo we're going to look at. This is the one we're going to analyze. You can see right here portion of, and this is just a portion of, and it says right here Panorama L1, D09, SO5, P10. Now, what I find interesting about this photo is, guys, guess what? A lot of people don't believe that they had manipulation software, but I'm here to tell you they actually did. And they were doing the same thing like NASA was doing. Imagine that. So, again, I believe that this is a United Space program, and it's for the higher up or the, the elite, so to speak, right? Um, so get out your magnifiers, too, because you may want to look at this photo, and you can download it right here. And before you expand it, because it's just going to break apart on you, it's not very big, uh, you may want to just take a look at this thing right here in the background. But there's other areas here, because you can see where they put this texture right here on the right, and there's other spots I'm going to show you guys as well. All right, so let's get into that. Here it is right here. This is how small the picture was. So we had to blow it up a little bit. And even then, guys, it's not quite enough. You can, you can increase the DPI, but it's still not quite enough, and it's okay. Let's just zoom into this a little bit. Right here, you can see where you got this texture right here where they went over something. Something else right here. You can see it very, very faintly. I don't know if you guys can just really take a look at this, but right here, you get this little bit lighter spot doing this. I want to outline this thing the best I can, but doing this. Wait a minute. Why would you need to outline a supposed crater that's right here, which I don't believe it's a crater? Again, look at this piece right here, and I'm just going to back up just a hair bit. If you're on a PC, this will help. Check it out with your magnifiers, and then I'm going to zoom way in. Of course, it's going to break apart, but for people on the smaller devices, what I find interesting about this thing, and you're going to see this much better, is this is going like this. But they also have a line right here where they were trying to block out some of this right here. Right Now, pay attention to this. something doing this. Now, it looks broken apart now because I'm really zoomed in, but it's the pieces right here you really want to have a look at. It's smooth and in a gray, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually get into this a lot more, we're gonna make the, the whiter parts brighter, and we're gonna see what's actually in here. Here's something over right here. Look at this piece. 
you can see whatever this is is kind of doing this here and it has this perfect dark hole in it right there's something right here where they've taken out and just notice how they did this look at this a lighter area literally going around like this And you can see this is still this piece right here almost has this weird piece that's doing this and going down like that. See that? Now, let me put this into a cyan plate for you guys so we can bring out these here a bit better. Right here. Now, look at the stuff that's in here. Right here. Now, this is going to be just a white outline. Again, you can see this right here. And there's other areas you can see. There's something right here, only the corner of it, and then that's it. That's the end of it. And there's other little pieces here, and we're going to bring those out much better. Let's just back out just a little bit. Guys, they so had manipulation software back in the day. Absolutely had it. And they were doing that since then. Check this out. There's something right here. All they do is they took a texture and put it right over it perfectly. And look at this. You can literally see the outline. I don't know if you guys can see this. is pretty cool. I just noticed this now. Right here. You can see the outline doing this. See this? This, oh, it's, it's totally riddled with manipulations and obfuscations. Totally riddled. All right. Let's get into this right now. Won't waste any time. We'll get right into this. All right, let's stop bringing out these pieces way in the background here, right? Because to me, this is absolutely insane when you start to enhance this. Again, I'm looking at these pieces right here. And what I do is I try to burn away some of this stuff right here. You can see something doing this. You see the white piece doing that. But the more we get into the steps, I'm going to show you guys that there's something right here. Like I said, this is cool. And we're just going to bring out the best we can. Of course, this is a real low-res uh, photo, right? But nonetheless, we'll see what we can bring out. Just back up a little bit. Let's keep going. Again, use your magnifiers if you want before I zoom in. I'm going to show you guys step-by-step step what I've done. And you can see right here, I started to bring this out right here. Zoom in. And to be truthful, guys, I don't know if this here has been, it's part of the manipulation, like a like an overlay. But this part here, you can see where they tried to take this out. You can see it right there. Try to go over it. But once you burn this thing away, it has some detail to it. And you can get rid of most of that, right? All right, let's keep going with it. All right. Here's that piece right here, which is, I find interesting. And there's something right here that they literally tried to take this stuff out, guys. Look at this. Check this stuff out. What I find interesting is the other little pieces that are in here. See this right here? One. Looks like there's something right here in the background as well. Little intricate pieces going into different parts, right? Now, this is the fully enhanced. I'm just going to back it a little bit, but check this out. There's other parts here. Other stuff that's been hidden, like right here. Let me show you the original. You can still see that. Now, I did blur it up a little bit more, and I, we can do that right here. Okay. Like right here. And you can see that now. See? There's pieces, little miscellaneous pieces, just sitting in here. But what they tried to do is really do their best to hide this. Now, you can see I put an outline over here because I'm trying to show you guys what they did. They took... Basically, they can use a lasso tool. I don't know if they called that back in the day. They could take this part right here, take it and move it over to this and block whatever they don't want you to see. Now, there are some things that they did leave out. You can see like right here. Where they made a mistake right there. We can see a little bit of white right here and then the rest of it up here. Same thing right here where they tried to take this out. But there's more to it than meets the eye. Piece right here. 
And you can see something again way up here where they really tried to hide that. See the difference in pixels? That's the difference which you got to look at. Look at the difference. You can see the line and differences in the pixels. They have literally have been taking stuff out of these photos way back in the day. So what's that tell you? If they're doing it back then, they're sure in hell going to do it now. It's as simple as that. So by being able to enhance these things the best that we can, this is what we got, guys. Check that out. Smaller pieces peeking out right here. These pieces here, something peeking out right there. This, what I see is stuff standing up right here. I'm just going to just, you know, draw a line. I'm not saying this is what it's doing. What I'm saying is I don't see this as just a ground doing this. I see things standing up. And what they do is they put all of this texture right here to make it look like it's actually flat ground. Well, some divots in the ground, right? Like right here and here. But in, in reality, it's probably things standing up right here. And they're making it look like it's a flat ground when clearly there's something else there. And again, you can see this part right here. I'm just going to zoom in. This is the original photo. See that right there? Look at the difference in pixels, guys. Where they left in some of the white pieces. You can call them disrupted pixels if you like. Call it what you want. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What matters is we're able to bring this stuff out and find out what they're really looking for um, while they were up there. And again, guys, they did six and a half miles. My God. Right? This is what they're really looking at. Right there. All of this stuff here. And I'm going to back out just a little bit more for anybody who's on the, on the computer screens. Or if you're even on a tablet or something. And use your magnifier to look at these things. They're there. This stuff is absolutely there. Only difference is we're burning it away. And then what we're doing is we're, we're taking the spots that already have like a brighter color or, or like a whitish or gray. And we're enhancing it. That's all we're doing to this. See it? And bringing out the other pieces that are laying there. Here you can see more lines. That's right, folks. That's what they're doing. They're taking this stuff and they're just drawing around it and trying to block it out the best they can. But you would never know that looking at it like this. You say, oh, wow, I just see a couple of craters. That's all I see. And right here on the lower half you can see where the actual uh rover wheel marks are yeah it's looking at much more than just soil or ancient lava tubes call it what they want to call it i don't care what they call it they're no better than nasa and i understand maybe for whatever reasons they're blocking this stuff out so the public cannot see it but here's the real deal this is what they're really there for guys what are we looking at here is it some kind of part of a spacecraft is it just mechanical you know uh equipment that's been left behind? I mean, what is it? Drop your thoughts in comments below. Let me know what you guys think, man. Um, I'm seeing things just like back in the Apollo missions. It was absolutely, uh, it was not a race. I think, it was, I think it was a collaboration between the United States and uh, Soviet Union back in the day um, to get up there and see what's really there. I don't think it was an actual space race to see who could beat each other out because they found a bunch of stuff and yet they're, um, they're manipulating the stuff out, obfuscating it. Same thing as NASA is doing. Hmm, imagine that. Again, drop your thoughts. Please, guys, like and share. Always appreciate you guys know that. And don't forget to check out the other Mars uh, videos that I'm putting out as well. Anyway, guys, again, thanks for watching. Always appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.